Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a really cool equation with complex numbers. Are you ready? Let's get started. We have e to the power z pi equals 2z or not 2z, it's a common joke that I make and we're going to solve for z. z is the variable, pi and e are constants and of course 2 is a constant too. How do you solve for z? z is in the exponent as well as appears as just a factor. So we're going to put it together in a special way. Okay. So here's what we're going to do first. I want to write the right hand side as a power of e. Can I do this? Can I write the 2z as e to the power ln 2z because e to the power ln x is just x. So I can do it. But I can also do this multiply both sides or just one side, it doesn't matter, by e to the power 2 pi n i. Why? Because it's one in the complex world, right? This has infinitely many values for every value of n, it's a different exponential, and you can write it in so many different ways like cosine of 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi, so on and so forth, but it just represents one. They all represent one, the same number, okay? Cool. Now, when we multiply them we're going to add the exponents so that's going to give us an equation right forget about the e's and now you can write z pi equals ln 2z plus 2 pi and i awesome how do we solve this well well i'm going to show you two different approaches one of them is kind of painful i don't know why i thought of that first so that's why it needs to be the first method, okay? So, here's how I'm going to proceed. First of all, I want to simplify this a little bit because I don't like this addition, and obviously that's an oversimplification, but let's just assume n is equal to zero. So it's basically gonna give us the principal value. You're gonna ignore the addition of multiples of two pi i, which is fine for particular values, and this is gonna give us something much, much simpler, of course. z pi is equal to ln two z. Now, at this point, I'm going to use my superpowers and put the z on the right hand side. Of course, it's going to go out, go to the right hand side as 1 over z, which I can write as z to the power negative 1 multiplied by ln 2z, and that's going to equal pi. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do something on both sides so that we can make this easily digestible by a special function, which I'm going to mention in a little bit. Maybe you already know it, but don't say it. Let's keep it as a surprise. Okay, so we have z to the negative 1 and ln 2z. They don't agree. They need to be the same kind. But we can do it. Don't worry about it. Here's what we're going to do. First, I want to write this over here. It's kind of better, more intuitive, easy to handle, I think, on the left-hand side. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 1 first. You know why I'm doing it? Because that negative 1 is going to come all the way over here and that's going to become an exponent. And that's what I want. Why? Because if you raise 2z to the power negative 1, what are you getting? You're getting 2 to the power negative 1 times z to the power negative 1. 2 to the power negative 1 is 1 half. z to the power negative 1 is z to the power negative 1. That's just what it is. And we have negative pi on the right hand side from multiplying by negative 1. Awesome. So far so good. Are you following? We're so close. So the next thing I need to do is multiply both sides by one half so that I can get the same thing inside and outside. What do I mean by that? I mean this expression right here should be the same as this expression. And now they are. You get the idea? That's the hocus pocus part. Now, we're going to make it even better because I want to get something like this. I want to get something like t e to the t. I don't have that. I have an ln. But I can get rid of that ln by using substitution or by using an identity. What is that identity? Well, that identity is basically writing one half z to the power negative one as follows. Can I write one half z to the power negative one as e to the power ln one half z to the power negative one? And the answer is yes, right? Because e to the power ln x is x, remember? That's the same thing. So now this is equal to negative pi over two that's good, don't worry, we're going to work on that later. Now, here's what I need to do. Define my t. What's my t? What's my coffee? This is my t, okay? 
And what happens if that's my t? This is also going to be a t. So we'll get t e to the t. Awesome. Beautiful. So now this is what we have. If you apply Lambert's w function, that's the hocus pocus part, you'll get t. Make sense? Awesome. Let's go ahead and apply w on this side and w on this side. And that's going to give us, from here, t is going to become ln 1 half of z to the power negative 1. And then that's going to be w of negative pi over 2. Of course, negative pi over 2 also needs to be worked out. Well, we can do it. Not too hard. Let me show you real quick. That's actually going to be, why don't I take this, isolate it, and work on it. I'm going to write it, first of all, negative 1. I'm going to write it as i squared. Here's the trick. You can kind of split it up into w i times i pi over 2. Do you recognize this? If you do, you should say or know that i pi over 2 is actually the argument for i. If you think about the argon plane and how would you represent i as a complex number in polar form, you would say e to the power i pi over 2, right? Because that's the argument. Make sense? Okay. So what does that mean? It means that i can be written as e to the power i pi over 2. Awesome. And when you apply Lambert's w function on this, you're going to get what? t e to the t, c e to the c, i pi over 2. So this is going to give you i pi over 2. Great. But here... By the way, that looks like theta, but that's actually a negative sign. I circled it. Now, this is what I have. It's equal to this. Okay? Make sense? Oops. Okay, something like that. So ln 1 half of z to the negative 1 equals i pi over 2. And from here, I can do e to the power that. Oops. I don't want that. I want you to go like this. Okay, this is e. 1 half of z to the power negative 1 using the definition of logarithms. And this is just i multiply by 2. z to the power negative 1 is 2i. And z is 1 over 2i. And multiply by negative i, you'll get the answer. And that'll be negative i over 2. So that should be the answer. Is there another solution? Go ahead and let us know. But I do have an alternative, which I could probably call the second method. Okay, back to basics, back to the original problem. This is what I have. Now I can do this. Why don't you just keep the z there and bring this over here to the right hand side and put the t on the left hand side. It's going to look like this. One half equals z times e to the power negative z pi. Cool. Let's switch sides. I like the left hand side better. And now here's what I'm going to do. To do my hocus pocus, I'm going to use it, but in an easier way. First, multiply by negative 1, and then multiply by pi, and you'll get it. Make sense? You see, we are right at the exact same solution. If you Lambert this one, that's going to give you negative z pi. If you Lambert this one, you know what you're going to get, and you will proceed as follows. Or the same way. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.